And that was, I don't ask you your business, said Tiffany, before she even realised she was going to say it. Miss Tick gasped. Mrs. Ogg's eyes twinkled, and she looked from Tiffany to Mistress Weatherwax like someone watching a tennis match. Tiffany, Mistress Weatherwax is the most famous witch in all, Miss Tick began severely, but the witch waved her hand at her again. I really must learn how to do that, Tiffany thought. Then Mistress Weatherwax took off her pointed hat and bowed to Tiffany. Well said, she said, straightening up and staring directly at Tiffany. I didn't have no right to ask you. This is your country. We're here by your leave. I show you respect as you in turn will respect me. The air seemed to freeze for a moment and the skies to darken. Then Mistress Weatherwax went on as if the moment of thunder hadn't happened. But if one day you care to tell me more, I should be grateful to hear about it, she said in a conversational voice. And them creatures that look like they're made out of dough, I should like to know more about them too. Never run across them before, and your grandmother sounds the kind of person I would have liked to meet. She straightened up. In the meantime, we'd better see if there's anything left you can still be taught. Is this where I learn about the witches' school? said Tiffany. There was a moment of silence. Witches' school? said Mistress Weatherwax. Um, said Miss Tick. You were being metaphorical, weren't you? said Tiffany. Metaf metaphorical? said Mrs Ogg, wrinkling her forehead. She means metaphorical, mumbled Miss Tick. It's like stories, said Tiffany. It's all right, I worked it out. This is the school, isn't it? The magic place, the world, here. And you don't realise it until you look. Do you know the Pixies think this world is heaven? We just don't look. You can't give lessons on witchcraft, not properly. It's all about how you are. You, I suppose. Nicely said, said Mistress Weatherwax. You're sharp, but there's magic too. You'll pick that up. Don't take much intelligence, otherwise wizards wouldn't be able to do it. You'll need a job too, said Mrs Ogg. There's no money in witchcraft. Can't do magic for yourself, see? Cast iron rule. I make good cheese, said Tiffany. Cheese, eh? said Mistress Weatherwax. Hmm, yes, cheese is good. But do you know anything about medicines? Midwifery. That's a good portable skill. Well, I've helped deliver difficult lambs, said Tiffany, and I saw my brother being born. They didn't bother to turn me out. It didn't look too difficult, but I think cheese is probably easier and less noisy. Cheese is good, Mistress Weatherwax repeated, nodding. Cheese is alive. And what do you really do, said Tiffany? The thin witch hesitated for a moment, and then... We look to the edges said Mistress Weatherwax. There's a lot of edges, more than people know, between life and death, this world and the next, night and day, right and wrong. And they need watching, we watch them, we guard the summer things, and we never ask for any reward. That's important. People give us stuff, mind you. People can be very generous to witches, said Mrs Ogg happily. On baking days in our village, sometimes I can't move for cake. There's ways and ways of not asking, if you get my meaning. People like to see a happy witch. But down here people think witches are bad, said Tiffany. And a second thought added, remember how rarely Granny Aching ever had to buy her own tobacco. That's amazing what people can get used to, said Mrs Ogg. You just have to start slow. And we have to hurry, said Mistress Weatherwax. There's a man riding up here on a farm horse. Fair hair, red face. Sounds like my father. Well, he's making the poor thing gallop, said Mistress Weatherwax. Quick now, you want to learn the skills? When can you leave home? Pardon, said Tiffany. Don't the girls here go off to work as maids and things, said Mrs O. Oh yes, when they're a bit older than me. Well, when you're a bit older than you, Miss Tick here will come and find you, said Mistress Weatherwax. Miss Tick nodded. There's elderly witches up in the mountains who'll pass on what they know in exchange for a bit of help around the cottage. This place will be watched over while you're gone. You may depend on it. In the meantime, you'll get three meals a day. Your own bed, use of a broomstick. That's the way we do it, all right? Yes, said Tiffany, grinning happily. The wonderful moment was passing too quickly for all the questions she wanted to ask. Yes, but, uh, yes, said Mrs Ogg. I don't have to dance around with no clothes on or anything like that, do I? Only I heard rumours. Mistress Weatherwax rolled her eyes. 
Mrs Ogg grinned cheerfully. Well, that procedure does have something to recommend it, she began. No, you don't have to, snapped Mistress Weatherwax. No cottage made of sweets, no cackling and no dancing. Unless you want to, said Mrs Ogg, standing up. There's no harm in the occasional cackle if the mood takes you that way. I teach you a good one right now, but we really ought to be going. But, but how did you manage it? said Miss Tick to Tiffany. This is all chalk. You've become a witch on chalk. How? That's all you know, Perspicacia Tick, said Mistress Weatherwax. The bones of the hills is flint. It's hard and sharp and useful. King of stones. She picked up her broomstick and turned back to Tiffany. Will you get into trouble, do you think? She said. I might do, said Tiffany. Do you want any help? It's my trouble. I'll get out of it, said Tiffany. She wanted to say, yes, yes, I'm going to need help. I don't know what's going to happen when my father gets here. The Baron's probably got really angry, but I don't want them to think I can't deal with my own problems. I ought to be able to cope. That's right, said Mistress Weatherwax. Tiffany wondered if the witch could read minds. Minds? No, said Mistress Weatherwax, climbing onto a broomstick. Faces? Yes. Come here, young lady. Tiffany obeyed. The thing about witchcraft, said Mistress Weatherwax, is that it's not like school at all. First you get the test, and then afterwards you spend years finding out how you passed it. It's a bit like life in that respect. She reached out and gently raised Tiffany's chin so that she could look her into her face. I see you opened your eyes, she said. Yes. Good. Many people never do. Times ahead might be a little tricky, even so. You'll need this. She stretched out her hand and made a circle in the air around Tiffany's hair, then brought her hand up over her head while making little movements with her forefinger. Tiffany raised her hands to her head. For a moment, she thought there was nothing there. And then they touched something. It was more like a sensation in the air. If you weren't expecting it to be there, your fingers passed straight through. Is it really there? She said. Who knows? Said the witch. It's virtually a pointy hat. No one else will know it's there. It might be a comfort. You mean it just exists in my head? Said Tiffany. You've got lots of things in your head. That doesn't mean they aren't real. Best not to ask me too many questions. What happened to the toad? Said Miss Tick, who did ask questions. It's gone to live with the we three men, said Tiffany. It turned out it used to be a lawyer. You've given a clan of the Knack Mac Fiegel, their own lawyer, said Mrs Ogg. That'll make the world tremble. Still, I always say the occasional tremble does you good. Come, sisters, we must away, said Miss Tick, who had climbed on the other broomstick behind Mrs Ogg. There is no need for that sort of talk, said Mrs Ogg. That's there to talk, that is. Cheerio, Tiff. We'll see you again. The stick rose gently in the air. From the stick of Mistress Weatherwax, though, there was merely a sad little noise, like the thwop of Miss Tick's hat point. The broomstick went juk, 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 juk. Wow. Mistress Weatherwax sighed. It's them dwarfs, she said. They say they've repaired it. Oh yes, and it starts first time in their workshop. They heard the sound of distant hooves with surprising speed. Mistress Weatherwax swung herself off the stick, grabbed it firmly in both hands and ran away across the turf, skirts billowing behind her. She was a speck in the distance when Tiffany's father came over the brow of the hill on one of the farm horses. He hadn't even stopped to put the leather shoes on it. Great slices of earth flew up as hooves the size of large soup plates, probably about 11 inches across. Tiffany didn't measure them this time. Each one shod with iron bit into the turf. Tiffany heard a faint <laughs> behind her as he leaped off the horse. She was surprised to see him laughing and crying at the same time. It was all a bit of a dream. Tiffany found that a very useful thing to say. It's hard to remember. It was all a bit of a dream. It was all a bit of a dream. I can't be certain. The overjoyed Baron, however, was very certain. Obviously this, this Queen woman, whoever she was, had been stealing children, but Roland had beaten her. Oh yes, and helped these two young children to get back as well. Her mother had insisted on Tiffany going to bed, even though it was broad daylight. Actually, she didn't mind. She was tired and lay under the covers in that nice pink world halfway between asleep and awake. She heard the Baron and her father talking downstairs. She heard the story being woven between them as they tried to make sense of it all. 
obviously the girl had been very brave. This was the Baron speaking. But, well, she was nine, wasn't she? He didn't even know how to use a sword. Whereas Roland had fencing lessons at his school. And so it went on. There were other things she heard her parents discussing later, when the Baron had gone. There was the way Ratbag now lived on the roof, for example. Tiffany lay in bed and smelled the ointment her mother had rubbed into her temples. Tiffany must have got hit on the head, she'd said, because of the way she kept on touching it. So, Roland, with the beefy face, was the hero, was he? And she was just like the stupid princess who broke her ankle and fainted all the time. That was completely unfair. She reached out to the little table beside her bed, where she'd put the invisible hat. Her mother had put down a cup of broth right through it, but it was still there. Tiffany's fingers felt very faintly the roughness of the brim. We never asked for any reward, she thought. Besides, it was her secret, all of it. No one else knew about the wee free men. Admittedly, Wentworth had taken to running through the house with a tablecloth round his waist, shouting, Wee wee men's! I'll scorn you in the boot! But Mrs Aking was still so glad to see him back, and so happy that he was talking about things other than sweets, that she wasn't paying too much attention to what he was talking about.